welcome to The Drum. I'm Steve Kinane. Coming up, how the government plans to price carbon, we'll talk to the Climate Change Minister, Greg Combay. Why a National Party senator called Rob Oakeshott a princess? And reporting on natural disasters, does the media really feel the victim's pain? Our panel tonight, editor of The Drum website, Jonathan Green. Liberal councillor for Stonington in Melbourne, Tim Smith. And in Canberra, ABC social media reporter, Latika Burke. Well, Australia is tonight a step closer to having a carbon tax. At a joint news conference with the Greens and independent MPs, the Prime Minister revealed a time frame for pricing carbon. The scheme is due to be rolled out from July next year, with the price fixed for three to five years before moving to a cap-and-trade system. Julia Gillard says she's determined to put a price on carbon. It has price impacts. It's meant to. That's the whole point. Consequently, things that uh, generate a whole lot of carbon pollution will be more expensive than things that generate less carbon pollution. That's the whole point, to have those price effects, to send a price signal so people innovate, people adapt, people go to low pollution, clean energy alternatives. Independent Tony Windsor was standing by the Prime Minister's side but warned that that didn't mean his support was guaranteed. All options are on the table. This is a framework to, to work within. We've made progress. Uh, obviously, there'd have to be agreement in both houses of Parliament of a, uh, a model uh, that we all agree with. We haven't seen that model yet, uh, and I'm sure there'll be arguments and issues raised. Uh, nothing, nothing settled, uh, in my view. I can only speak for myself. Opposition leader Tony Abbott was quick to accuse the Prime Minister of lying to Australian voters. She made a solemn commitment to the Australian people before the election. There will be no carbon tax under a government I lead. Having ruled it out before an election, she has now promised it after an election. This is the greatest betrayal, the greatest breach of faith since the LAW law tax cut breach of faith. We will fight this every second of every minute of every hour of every day of every week of every month. I don't believe it is going to happen because I think there will be a people's revolt uh, against this thoroughly bad, utterly dishonest new tax. And the issue dominated a theatrical question time this afternoon. I rule out a carbon tax. How can she justify today's betrayal? Move those How can posters. she justify? Mem Unfortunately, the leader of the opposition came to this place hoping to make his name on what he can wreck, stop and destroy. Well, we will continue working through the multi-party climate change committee to price carbon. It's the right thing to do. We have heard a lot about real Julia and fake Julia. Was it real Julia or was it fake Julia? that said we gave our word to the Australian people? Or was it real Julia or fake Julia who said there will be no carbon tax under the government I lead? And what we've seen on display from the Leader of the Opposition today is why Australians don't trust him to be Prime Minister. A performance of hysteria. A performance of the, of the ultimately hollow man. The man who believes in nothing and doesn't want to do anything to benefit the nation in the future. Latika, big announcement today, but there's a lot to be done between now and July if this is going to happen. That's right, Steve. Um, what Julia Gillard initially or, or really announced today was that she's managed to get everybody to the same starting point, or at least everybody she needs to get this reform through the parliament. Now, the government wants to get this legislation through parliament by the end of the year for that start date next year in July. So it's setting itself a very big goal. And whether it can do that, uh, of course, remains to be seen. But Pretty much everybody who is backing this or, or the Greens who are at the negotiating table and the independents have a vested interest in seeing this through. So the Prime Minister starts at a, a much better position than she would have before the election. Latika, let's remind everyone what the Prime Minister said about the, the idea of a, a carbon tax during the last election campaign. There will be no carbon tax under the government I lead. So Latika, how much will that comment haunt the Prime Minister? 
I think initially it will, but her own party admits that, that, or people in her own party admit privately, that that was one promise Labor should never have made. And the reason why they did it was because of the great big new tax scare campaign that they were afraid of Tony Abbott relaunching during the election. Now, Tony Abbott actually didn't relaunch that campaign today. He's got this idea that there'll be a people's revolt against an emissions trading scheme and against Julia Gillard's breach of faith, which she uh, described in Parliament. Now, where this matters is in the Parliament and in the Senate. The government is very likely to have the numbers it needs with the Greens after June, after July, sorry. And in the lower house, uh, they've got some in principle support from those independents they'll need to vote in favour of this. Tim, will there be a people's revolt against this? Well, um, this is one of the filthiest lies in modern Australian political history. Uh, the Prime Minister went to the election, looked the Australian people directly in the eye and said there will be no carbon tax and now there is a carbon tax on the table. Um, it's a filthy lie and frankly the Australian people are sick to death of this sort of business in government and I think uh, all hell will be to pay on the, on the head of the Prime Minister to be frank with you. Jonathan, will there be a people's re revolt against this lie, as, uh, as Tim puts it? We'll see. I mean, clearly it's, a, it's an untruth. That's, she said that in the campaign and it will come back to haunt her. But what, what's the government's choice? I mean, putting a price on carbon, which they've always said they would do, is absolutely fundamental to their platform, to what they're trying to do in this term. To, to shilly-shally around any longer without sort of prosecuting the main items of their agenda, it would be much more harmful for the government than, you know... The, worrying too much about the, the misspeaking through the campaign. They've got to weather that. Tim, uh, Tony Abbott said today it's going to be assault, an assault on the living standards of Australians. How does he know that if they haven't released what the price on carbon will be and if they haven't released what, released what the compensation to households will be? They haven't, but other eminent bodies have. For instance, the Australian Industry Group have a report uh, that suggests that the average electricity bill across Australia will go up $300. That's with, if there's a certain price on carbon. That's with the assumption of a $26 per tonne price. But I call on the government to actually come clean and, and tell us what the metrics are on this thing. But isn't the issue that they don't know yet and they're well, trying to work well, it out within that bizarre. committee? This is bizarre. I mean, who, who puts out a policy without you know, a, a costing on it? Something like this, that it would have a, a huge effect on the economy, a great big new tax on everything. Petrol, petrol prices up 6.5 cents a litre, 300 bucks. On, on an electrical bill. We don't, we don't know that yet, though, but, do but we? But it's a good estimate at the moment. And, and I think we, we shouldn't be cutting the government some slack here. You know, they're the government. They've put this on the table. Quite frankly, if you're going to increase uh, the cost of... This will increase the cost of living. She said it herself. It will. Yeah. So, yeah. so the, the key point is, well, let's not sort of cut them some slack and, you know, pussyfoot around this. Quite honestly... You know, if the government is going to increase the cost of living on people, then they should tell them how much it's going to be, and they can't do that at the but moment. But that's, that's still got to go before the parliament. Uh, Latika, uh, what, what's, what, what are the stages now? It's got to go back to the committee. They've got to nut this all out. Tony Windsor, Rob Oakeshott, the Greens and Labor. Yeah, and, you know, listening to Tim's claims there, I think he needs to update his slogans because not even Tony Abbott is running that line anymore, Tim. Um, but... The old emissions trading scheme under Kevin Rudd actually compensated low and middle households, low and middle income households, above their projected losses under emissions trading scheme. Now, the point of putting a price on carbon and a market-based price on carbon is that you do send the prices up because why? You need people to stop using inefficient energy sources or polluting energy sources. So that is the whole point of it. And it is a credit to Julia Gillard that on day one of announcing this, she has come out and said, yes, prices are going to go up and I'm not going to let you get spooked by this fear campaign. Now, obviously, we have to wait and see who will win that battle. Well, we'll talk to Greg Combe a little later on the program. The federal government's flood levy has passed the House of Representatives today as well. It had the support of Green Adam Bant, Independents Bob Catter and Andrew Wilkie and West Australian National Tony Crook. But neither Tony Windsor nor Rob Oakeshott voted with Labor. But there's no guarantee the levy will pass the Senate. Latika, it looks like Nick Xenophon might be hard to win over on this one. 
Well, Nick Xenophon is adamant that Queensland should take out disaster insurance and he says that if the government can't do that, then he won't be voting in favour of this legislation. Now, we understand that the government is looking at this and uh, is, is, is trying to see what it can do to compel Queensland to take out disaster insurance. Now, Queensland has its own reasons for not doing so. It says it wasn't cost effective and uh, Anna Bly says the state has reinsured itself. But certainly, Nick Xenophon is in the position I think he likes to be in with uh, crucial legislation in his hands solely. Jonathan, this is a tricky one, isn't it? Because Anna Bly made the point the other night on Q&A that they didn't think it was cost-effective to insure and they self-insured. They put money aside. Yep. That money wasn't enough because they didn't see a, a flood like this coming. But it's hard to know how the, the federal government can force Queensland to, to insure for this kind of thing. I think there'll be negotiation around this. I mean, I think Latika's right. This is a Xenophon moment. He's, he's going to love this, but he's not going to be the guy who stands up in the Senate and deprives the the hard-hit people of, of north and south Queensland of, and, and presumably of also of, of Victoria, ultimately. So you think he'll come to some they, kind of compromise on it? I think that's unavoidable. It's, uh, he, look, he's, he's playing a hard game and, he'll, you know, and he's standing on what's, I think, a, a pretty important point of principle. And I think there'll be negotiation around that, but everyone, I think, has to come to the party on this. Tim, what about the significance of Rob Oakeshott and Tony Windsor voting against Labor? Yeah, I was a bit surprised by that, to be honest. Um, does that mean Darren Chester can't call Rob Oakeshott a, a Labor stooge anymore? <laughs> um, well, Princess Diaries. He, he's still supporting Labor on the big things, so uh, as in supply and confidence. So I think that's probably a fair call uh, from Darren. But the, um, well, I was surprised, but they have, and you know, it's hard to pick these blokes. You know, I don't, like, who knows with these guys what they think from time to time? But um, they have. It's now gone to the Senate, and. We'll see what happens with uh, Senator Xenophon. Well, uh, Rob uh, Oakeshott has been copying a bit of heat from the Coalition in the last couple of weeks, and here's a comment that Senator National Party Senator Fiona Nash made on the doors today about Rob Oakeshott. Uh, I must say, when I read those reports yesterday about Rob Oakeshott and his comments, I did think, toughen up, Princess. Uh, it's not an easy game being in Parliament, and obviously there are going to be times when you have disagreements. Look, Tim, I know they play it tough in the National Party, but is, is that a bit harsh, calling Rob Oakeshott a princess? No, I don't think it is at all. Um, I think he's a big sook. Uh, I think he's a, a sanctimonious windbag of the order the Kim Bees used to be called. I think this bloke needs to, t needs to harden up. Ticker. Uh, yeah, a bit of ticker. Yes. Harden up and realise that he's picked a side and uh, he now needs to defend Has his corner. Has he picked a side? He voted with the Coalition today. Well, he has once. Goody. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Good on you, mate. No, but it, it probably does you no harm whatsoever to do that every as, once as in a the while. opportunity arises. Presumably he's grown the beers having now passed incognito in his electorate. <laughs> <laughs> well, Julia Gillard may have bigger problems than getting her carbon tax and flood reconstruction plans across the line. An article in The Age today warns that Tasmanian independent Andrew Wilkie is quite willing to bring down the government if the Prime Minister's promised problem gambling reforms fail. He says he'll pull his support for Labor, even if it's Tony Abbott who blocks the legislation to introduce a pre-commitment technology to poker machines. Mr Wilkie is quoted as saying this will be a real test of her leadership. Now, Tim, I know you want the government to fall, but do you want the government to fall under this logic? Uh, 